Hmm. Yes. I await your instructions. Speak your mind. Don't you have another leg spittle? Breaking rock or breaking skulls, same to me. Why didn't I look here first? And more to the point, why must I come fetch you for every little thing? Why am I not reassured? Listen, the lords from Isselbright are already here and waiting to be served. And for goodness sake, don't forget to gather your things from your chest before you come to table. If you insist. If you insist. Hello. Didn't Belin give you your instructions? Hello! At last! Ugh, don't go twisting an ankle in all your hurry. You take care of the drinks. Lord Wolcraft and Lady Larenthal prefer wine. Lord Joran would like ale. Lady Virilin and Lord Espen want mead. Go! Hello, 
Ah, the staff. I was starting to wonder if you'd all fallen ill with the plague or something. Can't find good servants in the city. Can't find them out here. What a world. Hello, the carriage was quite stuffy, and my throat is sorely parched. Ugh, you don't expect me to drink this. Oh dear, I think not. Hello. Yes, yes, get on with it. I suppose you expect me to toss you a coin for doing your job. Hello? Well? Ah, disappointing. Do you need something? You're here, finally. I must have a talk with Belene later. Shall we do business, gentlemen? Gentle- Yes, let's. We are convened to discuss the situation with Deron Gould. What has been rumored and suspected for so long has finally come to pass. A council of nobles with mining interests in the town have declared themselves independent from the crown of Isilmerald. I don't like this dirty business, sending a list of grievances to the king. Sounds more like the actions of a bunch of uppity peasant farmers than nobility. There are ways these things are done. And there are ways that kingdoms may crumble. I understand your feelings on the matter, Lady Larenthal, but Darren Gould enjoys the sympathies of many important persons here in the North, and I number myself among them. What's more, there have already been defections among the Azimerald nobility, most recently Aldnar. She speaks of your son, Lord Espen, who chose to forsake his birthright to join the rebels. Ah, yes. Thank you, Lady Larenthal, for reminding me. And I'll thank you, Lady Virulin, not to speak his name on this estate, nor in my hearing again. Oh, why, I will... <laughs> but you won't. Whatever the loyalties of uh, the young Lord of House Espen, the Southern Nobles have many legitimate complaints. Heavy. Some say ruinous taxation, delayed shipments thanks to the Crown's regime of inspections and checkpoints, the King's insistence that Daron Gould's military, e even the Town Watch, must be trained in the North. It's quite a list. Yes, it's all very sad. I'm sure they toss and turn the night away on their beds of gold bars. Taxation and bureaucracy are simply the facts of managing a prosperous nation, of keeping our enemies at arm's length. How long would their precious minds keep producing without the king's protection? Did you know, I heard this rebellion was prompted in part by a belief making the rounds in Deron Gould that the king himself is cursed. <laughs> oh my, what exceptional nonsense. <laughs> Have they been breathing the fumes of their own minds? All right, very amusing. But like Lady Varellen, I am not unsympathetic to our southern friends. Surely some of Isildbright's rules and dictums could be culled, especially if it means avoiding war, a much more costly proposition than losing a handful of coin in taxes. Wise counsel, my friend, but I fear the time for compromise is already past. The message from Daron Gould was deliberately provocative, leaving the king no way to negotiate or save face. The time has come, lords and ladies, for us to commit our forces and our purses to our rightful liege and crush Daron Gould. Or... Throw in with the rebels. They have the gold, they have a well-trained army, and most importantly, they control the mines. 
In a conflict of any significant length, having control of the source of the kingdom's metals means they must only outlast the North, rather than outright defeat her. Yuve, what is your opinion on recent developments? You're asking the errand boy? What does... Kindly do not interrupt me while sitting at my table, Lady Laranfor. Well, speak up. Very noble of you. I agree that the value of gold must be held cheap against the value of doing the honorable thing. Under attack. Please take shelter at once. Perhaps too little, I'm afraid. Their numbers are overwhelming. We were forced to fall back to the main gate, and they're already. Surely they will listen to reason, wherever they're from. They won't kill us out of hand like so many soldiers. They wouldn't dare. Right? Calmly, my friends. Let's all go out to meet them. They're not bandits, after all. Yes, go ahead. You have my blessing to speak on my behalf, if it's of any use. You? What? Where are you going? Come with me. Make haste. I do your bidding this time. You and you lot with me. The main gate has already been breached. The House of Espen is about to fall to the agents of Daron Gould. Now, never mind that. Just follow. And you, ready your weapon. With all the time you spent training under my Master of Arms, you must be able to defend yourself by now. your step around our guests. Blood says... <laughs>
Now listen to me. Listen closely. This is important. The Lady Espen was the love of my life. My one love. There was nothing arranged about our betrothal. Be quiet, I tell you. You never saw her yourself. Not that you'd remember, but if you had, she... Gods damn this Derongold swine. Behind me is my dressing chamber. Go fetch my sword from there. Clever words will avail us nothing but a swifter death. Now fetch my sword. I do your bidding this time. you at last, father. Didn't figure you would try and hide from your fate. To be betrayed by my own son. Who wouldn't hide from such a terrible end? I've learned a few things, you see. Things your priests and man-at-arms could never teach. I have gained a new perspective. Seen the truth of this world. So, you were not even paid in coin to turn traitor against your own house. Only pretty words. Kill me if you wish, but I promise it will avail you nothing. Every man pays for his sins, my son, and the price of a sin such as this. Enough of your piety! It sickens me. But your last decision, at least, is the correct one. Hold still, father. Don't worry, my child. Your hardships are over for today. Get up, lazy boy. It's time to go to bed. But no more questions for tonight. There's a cot over there. You should try to get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow will be a very, very long day. Wake up, lazy. Always. Oh, now, how about you make yourself useful and weed the garden? Take a look at this list. Once you've read it, let me know, please. Feeling oh, good, good, you know how to read. I have something that will help you gather what we need without hurting yourself. Two, here. Put these on. Oh, 
good. You put your gloves on just like the rest of us. All fingers at the same time. You weren't trying to put them on one finger at a time, were you? By the way, be careful of the creatures in the forest. They can be a bit bitey. Take this... Feel free to take a rest if you need. If you insist. Yes. into my eyes as you perish. Sales. I do your bidding this time.
I'll cut you into little pieces. <laughs> Surrounded by curse. So tiresome. Do not waste my time. Speak your mind. On the moon. Take the hindmost. I do your bidding this time. Don't you have another lick, Spittle? If you insist. If you insist. Feeling well. What? What's this? 
Did you forget to make these herbs edible, child? Come now, you must dry them to bring out the flavor. Surely you've cooked before. I have to wonder what that Lord Espen even had your tutors teach you at his fancy estate. Oh, <laughs> oh well, take this candle and get to drying. Well and dried. Give me just a moment and... There. It's on the fire. Now we have a few precious moments to spare. We should talk. About talking. you knew yesterday. The attack on the Espen estate was only the first spark of a consuming fire, I am afraid. There are worse things than war, though. There is something you must understand before you leave here. A great and terrible curse has fallen over Isilmerald and much of the rest of Yerengal. It drives men and women to madness. It starves the prince and turns the pauper to a life of desperation. It is the essence of avarice itself. A curse of greed spreads through the land. A terrible covetousness that hides in mortal hearts. It is among the darkest of dreams. But this is no normal greed, no. There is magic behind it. No mere apprentices can trip either. It is most dangerous, and you must understand that. Ah, the stew is done now. Just let it cool. On the move. Speak your mind.
I see that look in your eye again. No, no more questions for today. Eat your stew and get some rest. I do your bidding this time. Good morning. I fear that our time together is nearing an end. Yes, that is the gist of it. Things were put in motion all over Yerengel since I plucked you from your father's house. My child. Don't you have another leg spittle? If you insist. If you insist. Sorry, sight it is. <laughs> no, the wars of men are none of mine. Praise the stone. I am Helgenha. Call me Helga, that's too much of a mouthful. Is that a serious question? Even a league beneath the Skag Mountains 
Everyone knows of the war. Anyway, this was one of the smaller battles between a Silbright and Dead and Gould. Well, that's quite a tale. If I was a bard, I'd be taking notes right now. <laughs> it stands to reason that with your father dead, you are the heir to his estate. This is the road to Asilbrat, you know. Capital of Asilmarilt, and also the world's capital of noble titles. Excellent! Onwards to Asilbrat! Go ahead. I'm listening. Go ahead. Don't you have an ears? I know. Hello. If you insist. <laughs> <laughs> 